guys, welcome back. Chris and Randy here with WeBuyGuns.com with another unboxing video for you. Today we got in quite a bit of stuff, so let's go ahead and jump into it now. All right, first up we have one from a customer in Illinois, and we thank you for sending that in. Let's see what's in the box, Chris. All right, first up, I'm going to use that. Where's my scissors, Randy? <laughs> Scissors are missing. Right here. Oh. oh my goodness. Here, hold on. Got it? Yes, I have the Hawa. All right, so what it looks like we have here, and man, this thing's really packaged. It's vacuum packed. It is vacuum sealed. How are you doing today? How are you doing, sir? Okay, sorry guys, somebody came in while we were opening this, but this is a Howa 1500. This is in the short action, and this is a 450 Bushmaster. We've had several of the Howa 1500s in here before. For the money, they are awesome firearms. A little bit more pricey than what you're going to pay for like a, a Ruger American, um, but not much more, definitely less than what you're going to pay for things like a Remington 700. Uh, where would you kind of put this in line with? Actually, if you look at like the Ruger Ranch, 762 by 39 they're short action rifles it's probably well in line with that series of guns but how is really really cool firearms not much else really to say about it what do you think about the condition of that one i would say excellent condition chris yeah it looks like it probably hasn't even been used it still has the factory ink tags on it and i think that there is a spare is there a spare or just the one magazine in there one so, magazine still yeah, in the box still in the box yes yeah, so this probably hasn't been used but really cool firearm big thank you to our customer where did it come from illinois Yep. Uh, thank you for sending this one to us. We will move on to the next one. All right, next up we have one from a customer in Minnesota. So thank you so much for selling this one to us. Always cut away from yourself. Not one from this guy. We have. Your desk we have. Those are very iconic. I got a hold of something, Chris. <laughs> Ooh wee. is really cool. This is a Winchester model with big soccer pair, but that's okay. This is a Winchester model 1903, I believe chambered in 22 Winchester. Is that right? I think they just said 22, but I believe it's 22 Winchester, which is not the same. Uh, these are only made in the 22 caliber. Uh, they were made between about 1903 and they discontinued them in the 1930s. They made these in a standard and a deluxe model. This is a standard. It is a tube fed and that is how we get into the tube very interesting crescent butt plate i do not know when this particular one was manufactured but i'm sure we can look that up with the serial number uh, and it is charged with this little actuator here at the front of the handguard not much else really to say about it very cool rifles uh probably this is only the second or third one of these we've ever had in here but what do you think about the condition of that one Metal doesn't look too bad. There's been a pretty serious crack in the stock that has been, looks like glued at some point yeah, in time. Yeah, the other side too. A crack through the wrist. It's all the it's way been through and then, yeah. Yeah, on this side. So the stock's in pretty rough shape, but it's seen, seen some repairs. Metal looks good though. Yeah, metal looks good. If but the stock would, were replaced, this would actually be a really nice example. Right. Just because of the butt stock, Chris, I would say fair condition. Um, other than that, I would I would say certainly good condition at the very least um, it's just the condition of the butt stock um, i think downgrades it uh, quite a bit yeah with the stock i'd probably put it fair to good if the stock were replaced i would even say very good condition yeah. for its age uh customer did say good i said they were right there in the yeah. middle i mean that's fair that's totally fine i do remember this coming through and he did point out and show clear pictures of the of the damage and the repairs in the stock sure. so that was fully made aware to me when at the time we made the offer so totally good with that one really cool 1903 model or 03 i think we went about the 20s they changed it to 03 from 1903 but cool rifle anyway happy to get that in and share it with you guys all right, up next we have one from Illinois. So thank you so much for sending this one to us. 
I remember this one, I think. But this is what I think it is. It's very appropriately coming to us from Chicago. <laughs> This is a Cobra. Yeah. <laughs> John's like, I already knew. When you said Chicago, I knew it was coming out. It's in beautiful condition. Uh, this is a Cobra M11, pre ban So the M11 was, I made the M11 in 9mm and 380. This one is a 9mm. The, the model, or the M10, was in 45 ACP and 9mm. It was a larger frame. So this was the smaller of the two. The earlier ones actually used modified Sten magazines, which is what I believe that that is. This is a little hand stop strap that goes there. You can put your hand in to keep it kind of back away from the muzzle. Very well wrapped, Chris. Yeah, so this is a modified Sten magazine to go in here. They had their own sort of Mac proprietary magazines as well. But really cool, sort of early pre ban uh, manufactured by Cobra. Anyway, cool firearm. What do you think about the condition of that one? Pretty nice, Chris. There's a few marks back here on the back. I'm not sure if those are rub out. Um, but I would say certainly very good condition. Yeah, I would agree with that. This looks great for the time frame. So really cool Cobra M11. Thank you so much to our uh, seller in Illinois for sending this one to us. All right, next up we have one from a customer in Missouri. Thank you so much for getting this one to us. Here we got. Looks like we have two. It's all the time. some guacamole. First up we have Glock model 21. Now the 21 is their full size 45 ACP. Uh, the Glock 30 would be their compact and the 36 which nobody talks about anymore is their sort of single stack six round capacity uh, 45. Generation 4 so you do still have the finger grooves and the more aggressive grip stippling on this. The 45 Glock model 21 has been out for several decades at least at this point in time. Really good firearms 13 round capacity double stack. Not much else really to say about it, but just really cool uh, handgun. If you put uh, Glock with the word block, it is the 21 that is probably the most blocky. It's just very, <laughs> very large. Just a giant sort of a piece of rebar up here as a slice. So <laughs> very cool firearm. Uh, Randy, what do you think about the condition of that? It's just a few marks on the finish, Chris, but I'd definitely say very good. Customer said excellent. I would agree there are just a couple very, very minor handling marks, but at arm's length, you can't even really see them. So excellent's totally fine, not a problem there. Uh, next one here, we have a Glock Model 17. Now this is a Generation 5. So that is where they would delete the finger grooves like the Generation 1 and 2. You still have the more aggressive grip stippling, the forward slide serrations. They went to the five groove, is it the five or the six groove barrel actually, the GMB, the Glock Marksman barrel with the ion bond coating uh, here, the NDLC coating, I should say. Uh, kind of a more black, very tough finish. They put the front slide bevels on here like you find in the older baby Glocks, the 26 and the 27. The Glock 17 is one of my favorite Glock handguns. It's in my top five all-time favorites. I am a big fan of the Glock 17. Uh, kind of a little bit of a flare to the Magwell too. And the Gen 4s and Gen 5s that come with three magazines like this, a nine millimeter, your 17 round capacity. So really cool firearm, Randy. What do you think about that one? Same thing, Chris, um, at arm's length, I don't see a mark on it. Um, there's only very minor marks on it uh, up close. So I would go ahead and go with excellent condition. Yeah, I would too. So yeah, we're definitely good there. Thank you to our customer in Missouri, right? Yes. In Missouri for sending this to us. Next up is one from a customer in Virginia. Thank you for sending that in. Thank you to a local customer, Jim, for the box opening. Machete. <laughs> machete, holding machete. I would. A bumbo knife. Keep your hands and arms away from this, Chris. <laughs> we have not a brace. Standard AR-15 lower receiver. It's like a Bear Creek Arsenal lower. All right, we have a Bear Creek Arsenal lower with 
I, and I don't know Upper. Might be Bear Creek as well, but I'm not seeing any markings on it. I'm sure it's on the paperwork somewhere. And a SIG. All right. 762 by 39. Ah, it would appear to be a 762 by 39. Look at that. These are always fun. Are we good? Good. Okay. Bear Creek Arsenal makes really good, affordable AR-15 components. This is built on a Bear Creek lower. Clearly, this is an at-home build. Um, I don't know where the upper was from or if it was just assembled from parts, but everything seems to be nice and solid. This is in 762 by 39. You can really tell by these, not only the stickers, but this sort of iconic curve to the original AR mag. A 5.56 mag, of course, will fit in here if you want to build this out for a 5.56 or anything in the AR-15 variety. Uh, not much else really to say about it, just a nice build, 762 by 39, which is a ton of fun. And the SIG is standard P320. P320, we have unboxed a lot of these on this channel. This one is in 40 Smith & Wesson. Uh, the cool thing about the P320 is the modularity. This one has had the trigger upgrade done to it. It is the pistol concept that was accepted by the United States military as the XM-17 handgun, um, as part of the XM-17 handgun trial, beating up the Glock 19X. We've talked about that before too. It does have night sights on this one. Good, just usable utilitarian polymer frame handgun from SIG. A lot of you guys love the SIG P320. Uh, let's go over condition on these. What do you think about that? I would say very good, Chris. Yeah, I would agree, and that is what the customer said on that one. So, yeah, we're definitely good. Just a couple minor handling marks. What about that? A little more marks on that. Some holster wear, a few scrapes. Um, I would say the high end of good, probably. Yeah, I would give it a solid good. There are holster marks here on the front end of the, of the slide. A couple small handling marks and some scratches on the slide as well. Nothing terrible. Uh, some kind of light scratching in the polymer as well. I would probably give this a good condition, probably high end of good. I don't know if I would quite go very good on that. And customer said, good. So we are definitely in line there. Thank you again to our customer, where is this, Virginia? Virginia. In Virginia for sending these to us. We will move on to the next one. All right, up next we have a package from a customer in Georgia. Thank you so much for selling this one to us. See you again. Good. An IWI and a Springfield. Some magazines, and that's it. This is a Springfield 1911, 1911A1. And this is probably, this looks like it's a little upgraded. Is this the this is standard parkerization with night sights, but I feel like the forward slide serrations, the skeletonized trigger and hammer, the ambidextrous safety, and the extended beaver tail lead it to not being just the standard A1. I don't know. This doesn't say range officer or loaded or anything like that, so I'm not too sure. Um, anyway, this is a Springfield 1911. So the Springfield 1911s came out. I mean, they've been out for a while. I don't remember when they first hit the market. They're actually really good handguns. Actually, one of the only commercial 1911s I actually personally own is a standard 1911 A1 Springfield Stainless. I've had it in a couple of videos, like my older 1911 comparison video. That was actually my 1911. My wife got it for me as a wedding gift those many years ago. So they've been making them for at least that long. Um, really cool firearms, very functional and very affordable for what they are. Not too much more to say about it. They have the loaded models and the target models and the range officer, the range officer elite and the operator. And they have a huge variety of the EMPs. They have a huge variety of their line of 1911s. Uh, so if you're looking for a really good quality 1911, that won't break the bank. The Springfield 1911s have always been one of my personal favorites. So really cool firearm. Is there anything else you want to add about that, Randy? I would say excellent condition, Chris. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it looks like new in box, so I totally go along with that. It's a uh, Excellent condition, and that is, I think, what the customer said. Yeah, customer said excellent. So we agree there. Next is an IWI. This is a 941 Jericho. Now, the Jericho is a pistol that had been used by the IDF for some many years, but a 9mm, uh, full steel frame construction. Now, it did go off of the cues from the CZ75 line where the slide actually fits down inside the frame. 
these are used with, by uh, Israeli military, or I'm sorry, police as well. Um, and these have actually been coming into the United States versus surplus as early as probably the late 80s, early 90s. And they still come in uh, occasionally. I know Century Arms brought in a batch of Israeli police retired um, a 941 Jericho is maybe about four or five years ago. So you can find them as surplus on the market. Now there's um, IWI and then IMI, Israeli weapons industries and then Israeli military industries uh, are still being manufactured today. You can get them in the polymer frame or the steel original steel frame. Uh, some know them as the Baby Eagle in the full-size configuration with the Jericho 941 in this configuration. Very, very cool, very functional, very comfortable firearm. Now, this particular one is actually in 45 ACP, so you don't see them too often in that. Typically, you see them in 9mm, and the size actually isn't that much different from a 9. So, really cool, uh, functional firearm. What do you think about the condition of that one? Again, Chris, I would say excellent condition. I agree. It looks excellent to me. Very cool firearm. Again, big thank you to our customer. Well, first of all, he said he said excellent there too. But big thank you to our customer in Georgia for sending us these. We will move on to the next one. All right, next up is one from a customer in Michigan. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, <laughs> oh. Not a C5 build it upper. Nope. I don't have the paperwork. Uh, I do not. Okay, this is very cool. This is modeled after a Beretta pistol. I can't remember which one, but this is a model 644 by Bursa. Mm. It is a 22 LR. Very uncommon firearm. In fact, I've never had one of these in here before. I remember doing research on this. If I can figure out. That's interesting. It's got a heel. Smarter than the gun, be smarter than the gun. It's like a Phoenix. Yeah, it's like a Phoenix where there's all sorts of different buttons and that's the safety. Ah, okay. So we're gonna learn this one together. <laughs> I'm not too familiar with this. I remember seeing it come through. Not a whole lot of information out there on this. So you have a push bar safety on the frame. You have a toggle switch safety on the slide. Um, either one, let's see, if the frame safety is on, of course you cannot fire the handgun. You cannot drop the hammer. Same, whoop, you can drop the hammer though if the, if the slide safety is on. So I wonder if they, oh, it's a hammer block. So you have a hammer block safety here and a frame safety here. Uh -huh. Magazine release is a heel style like you find on like the Beretta Model 1951 pistol. So I early Beretta style design magazine release. Single stack 22 LR. Um, again, not much else to say about it. You guys are learning about it along with me. Very unique and odd one. Target grips, a lot of this probably done for importation into the United States would be my guess. Nice heavy weight to it. Kind of cool, unique and different. Never seen one before. Uh, what do you think about the condition there? Um, it's actually very clean, Chris. Um, overall, I'd probably call it very good. I would agree with that. So I do not know what the customer said. We do not have the paperwork here, but we'll double check that again. But anyway, uh, that is pretty cool. A little Bursa 22. All right. We have another one from a customer in Missouri. Thank you so much for selling this one to us. It appear to be a Beretta. It is a PX4 Storm. This is chambered in 40 Smith & Wesson. Double single action, manual safety on the slide. Now the PX4 Storm, one of Beretta's earliest polymer frame pistol lines coming off of the Cougar generation of pistols, uh, does have a drop, hammer drop safety. Now the interesting thing about the PX4 Storm, which came off of the Cougar series, is the barrel is a rotating to lock barrel as opposed to tilting or fixed straight blowback like you typically find on handguns. Um, rotating lock barrel, kind of like you see I got an M14 or an M1 Garand or a Mini 14, kind of how the, the rotary style locking system of the, of the bolt, that's what this reminds me of. These things did not really catch on too well. The Cougars are really popular. Those are the alloy frame versions. These just never quite did that well. Having a gun store here for closing in on a decade, anytime we've had the PX4 Storms and people kind of overlook them, I think it's kind of the unconventional lines and look of the pistol that have turned a lot of people off. Although I do know that there are some people out there who definitely enjoy them. So if you like the looks of them, especially used, it's not super valuable on the used market, but a good, reliable, functional firearm nonetheless, they just look a little bit unorthodox. So anyway, what do you think about the condition of that one? 
I would say excellent condition, Chris. I would actually agree with that, and the customer said very good. So we definitely are good to go there. So again, big thank you to our customer again, is it Missouri? Is that right? Yeah, our customer again in Missouri for sending this one to us. We will move on to the next one. All right, Chris, next up one from a customer in Virginia. Thank you for bringing that in. A box in a box. Box in a box. The shield. It is M P. Ooh, M P. Ten millimeter, two point oh, Chris. Those are cool. Those just hit the market. Yeah, it is rather new. It has the uh, the nice enhanced uh, trigger Glock style safety trigger here. Kind of like it, an Apex. Yeah. yeah, it is optics ready. It has the cut here. It already has the raised suppressor sights. Front serrations, uh, love the M and P's. So the 2.0 would come out on the market. Gosh, it's probably been at least three years ago now. Uh, coming off of the original M and P series, they put more aggressive uh, texturing on the grip. Now I know, I'm not, blah, blah, blah. I know a lot of people with uh, kind of rougher hands really like that more aggressive grip. I, with my soft baby hands, do not. Um, a lot of people when they would carry the shield or the compact versions of this or even the full size if you're carrying it inside the waistband you don't have something like an undershirt between you and the gun a lot of people complain about the shaping on their skin all day so this when people are turned off with the 2.0s is typically because of that more aggressive grip texturing i know i know a lot of you guys like it i actually had a chance to shoot one of these i was at the 2a edu shoot uh with the 2a edu channel and somebody brought one of these out pretty interesting the ergonomics felt a little bit weird to me but and the 10 millimeter it's a really cool firearm 10 millimeter is gaining a lot of momentum and popularity especially in recent years so a lot of companies are coming out with the 10 millimeter like they are the 5.7 by 28 now there's two calibers you see people playing with now hmm. really cool firearm what do you think about the condition of that one i think it goes without saying yeah, excellent. It Chris. looks like new. I mean, it doesn't look like the things have been used at all. So uh, that's what it, that is what the customer said. So we are good there. We will move on to the next one. All right. Last but not least, we have one from a customer in Tallahassee, Florida. Thank you so much for selling this one to us. Normally, I don't say the city, except unless it's Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> then you gotta say. Then you gotta say. It's like a rule. <laughs> and a block. And a holster. And a river. Mm -hmm. okay, cool. okay. So first up here, Chris, we have a Ruger SR twenty two. Like and I have never seen one like this that before. Is nice. It appears to have like a gray Cerakote or finish. silver. It looks more silver. Silver. Yeah. Okay. Like a maybe gray. Gray is just a less shiny silver, isn't it? Yes. It's 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 a mediamos. So it's it's between silver and gray. Mediamos. I yeah. like it. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, it does appear to be factory. They call it SS, I guess, for stainless steel. But it's not stainless steel. No, I don't think. no, I don't think so either. I don't know. Savage stainless Cerakote. Ah, so it's Savage stainless Cerakote, Chris. <laughs> um, it is very interesting, a two tone. Never seen one like that. Uh, but as the viewers probably know, I think you and I both agree, the SR22 uh, for the compact size 22. Semi-automatic is our favorite one to shoot. Modeled very closely off of the Walther P22. A lot of your semi-automatic 22s, unless they're like the Target 22s, like the Rugers and the Smith & Wesson, where you're just moving that bolt inside the slide. Anything where the entire slide is moving, they can be very picky on ammunition because you are dependent on the power of that small 22 caliber round to move this, to move and actuate the slide. You start introducing carbon and things like that and start slowing it down even more, which is why stoppages can be a little bit more common in semi-automatic pistols in this configuration. These, though, in my opinion, are the most forgiving with different ammunition brands. And they, Winchester White Box and Thunderbolts, and of course, CCI Mini Mags and Stingers, they just seem to like it all. I am a big fan of this. And when anybody's getting into 22 pistols, like in the training configuration where they're not doing the target again, the Ruger Mark series and stuff, I always point people to the SR22. It's one of my favorite 22 pistols out there. Uh, what do you think about the condition of that one? Um, honestly, Chris, I would have to say excellent condition. Customer says very good, and I would agree with excellent. I think it looks fantastic. It looks like new. Uh, so we're definitely good there. Uh, let's move on to the next one. 
All right, we have yet more Glocks. Bear with us, guys. I know many of you aren't quite there with us on the Glocks. Glock 29, 10 millimeters. So we looked at the 21 earlier in this video, which was the full size 45 ACP. They make the Glock 30, which is a compact 45 ACP, which is exactly the size of this handgun. But this is the model 29, which is the 10 millimeter version of the Glock 30. Um, that's a lot of numbers. <laughs> but anyway, also a very blocky design, but in the 10 millimeter, these model 29s are very popular handguns. Really cool, this one here has four magazines. This is a generation four with the finger grooves and the more aggressive stippling. However, they did put, previous owner put talon, uh, smoother contour grips over this, kind of quiet that uh, stippling down, uh, obviously. But a really cool handgun. Uh, what do you think about the condition of that one? Just a few minor marks on it, Chris. Um, I would say very good, the high end, very good. I would agree. There's a couple marks. There's one up on the top of this slide. Uh, there is another one here. It's a very, very, very light surface level scratch on the right hand of the slide. You're going to not uh, kind of difficult to see unless you're really looking. So I would go very high end of, of uh, very good or low end of excellent would be fine on this one. And the customer says very good. So right there online. So thank you again for that one. And the last one of the evening is a Glock Model 26. Now this is upgraded fiber optic sights. This is a generation five. Now the Glock 26 is the smaller frame version of the Glock 19, known as one of the baby Glocks. Its counterpart in 40 would be the Glock Model 27. One of the first handguns that I actually carry, now I carry the first gen shield that came out in about 2012. Uh, this one has five magazines. So typical capacity here is 10 rounds, but you can get the 12 round extended mags as well. Plus you can fit the Glock 19 and the Glock 17 uh, and even the 33 round extended Glock 18 magazines will fit in these as well. That's what I've always kind of liked about the interchangeability of the parts and the magazines and things like that. But kind of a cool, very compact double stack version from the Glock line. What do you think about that one? like fiber optic sights. Um, I would say excellent condition on this one, Chris. Yeah, I would agree with that. Customer did say very good. So we're definitely in line with all of those. Big thank you to all of uh, our customers who sent us all these firearms. Everything's spot on, excellent condition. Everything looks great. So just another great day of unboxing. So anyway, guys, that ends it up for us. We're gonna leave you off there. I am Chris. And I am Rand. And we will see you guys next time. It's a box. Oh, good. <laughs> Son of a Thank you for that, Randy. Ugh. That hurt. <laughs> Aggressive, John. <laughs> John, you're becoming very violent. You need to calm, calm down, John. We need to send you to HR seminar. We need to go to H. <laughs> we need to send you to the ATF seminar. <laughs> Did you watch that today? No. Absolutely not. Really? <laughs> Say Illinois. No, I said Illinois. Okay. Or Illinois. That's the French would say. And the French would say. Illinois. Illinois. No, I can't. As the French would say, no, I do not want to go there. As the <laughs> Russian would say, no, AK. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <let's> <laughs>